Congressman, um, this is a pretty momentous day in American foreign policy history, and you were a big part of it. Tell us what it was like to go down there and come back, some of your impressions of this very vivid and historic moment. Sure. It was a huge day for Alan Gross and his family, but also a very big day uh, for our country and setting us on a new direction uh, in U.S.-Cuban uh, relations. Uh, look, I, I think all of us were very nervous right up to the last moment uh, that this agreement might somehow uh, fall apart. We've been working to try and bring Alan Gross home for the last five years, uh, no one more so than his wife, uh, Judy, uh, who was, of course, uh, on the airplane. Uh, so it all it gave us all a, a great uh, feeling uh, when we walked off the tarmac uh, in Havana into the building at the airport uh, to see Alan Gross. Uh, and while he's very fragile and very frail, he just had this huge smile uh, that said, the day is finally here, uh, and gave everybody big and very strong hugs for a frail guy. Uh, and the flight back um, was obviously a joyous one. And when we crossed into U.S. airspace, uh, Alan said yes and put his hands up. Uh, and I should say that uh, while he's obviously thrilled that he is free and out of prison in Cuba, uh, he also firmly believes that the new policy announced by the president will, over time, uh, help provide more freedom and opportunity to the Cuban people uh, going forward. Congressman, you're, we're all happy. Everyone's happy. Mr. Gross is home. Uh, you're very happy, and Mr. Gross, as you just said, is very happy about the policy. We've been struck, uh, to some extent, by the reaction of Republicans, Speaker Boehner, John, uh, Speaker John Boehner, uh, Marco Rubio, and others. A very negative reaction, uh, apocalyptic, very critical of the president. What would you say about the mentality of Republicans? Are they are they stuck in the Cold War, from your point of view? What do you think is causing them to be as negative as you are positive about the changes? Well, I do think they're stuck uh, in the Cold War. Look, uh, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Uh, we've tried to isolate Cuba for 50 years. We've tried to punish uh, Cuba for 50 years. Uh, and by our own measure, it's been a failure. It has not resulted in more democracy and more opening up in Cuba. In fact, it's helped sustain the Castro regime. The Castro brothers have now survived eight United States uh, presidents. So. When a policy is clearly a miserable failure, you should try something different. And I, I firmly believe that engaging uh, with Cuba through more travel, more trade, more communication, that will help uh, create more opportunities for the Cuban people, and they will, over time, demand uh, more freedom. So clearly, the policy of the last 54 years has not worked. Uh, let's try something else uh, going forward. Congressman, by your logic, uh, we shouldn't just be easing the travel restrictions and, re and establishing a diplomatic relationship. We should be lifting the embargo, too. That's not what uh, the president is pushing for at this point. Do you think it's time for that, too? I do think that that should be the next step. But look, we've got a lot of work to do just to implement uh, the actions the president announced today. I think those will immediately result in more interactions uh, between the American people and the Cuban people. I think they will get a bigger and better taste uh, of what it means to uh, engage in a market economy and have the influx of new ideas and access to uh, the communications equipment that lets them reach the world. Uh, but the next step after that uh, would be uh, to lift the embargo. But I don't think anyone's under any illusions that that's going to happen anytime soon. But the president's steps taken today are a big step in the right direction for the Cuban people. Congressman, I want to ask you about another news matter related to freedom and liberty. Sony wanted to release a movie called The Interview. Someone stole documents from Sony, hacked in, stole the documents, released them with the intent of trying to stop the movie from being released. And now the biggest movie chains in the country effectively have shut the movie down and said they're not going to show it. It's not going to be aired in the United States theatrically. Should leaders be speaking out? How do you feel about what's happened? Well, obviously, everyone's uh, concerned about the breach, but I, I, I have to say I have spent <laughs> the last four days in anticipation of this uh, trip to Cuba trying to make it happen. And so um, I, while, I, while I've seen the headlines on the TV screens, um, I have not followed that story as closely as I probably should. 
Um, but I am pleased I was uh, working on the Alan Gross case. Congressman, I know I, I don't want to push you on something you haven't thought that much about, but I know you will know that, that some of the people involved with Sony have been critical of the news media for covering things that were released in those hacked materials over last weekend and so on. Do you think that the news media should not be uh, writing about or talking about things that were unearthed uh, as the result of those hacks into the Sony corporate systems? I, I believe that once that information enters uh, the public space, uh, once it escapes, it's awfully difficult uh, to put the genie back in the bottle. It then becomes uh, part of the public debate. I think it's hard to claim sort of a private property right uh, in some of that released information. That would be my gut reaction. I'd obviously want to hear uh, the legal argument on the other side, but uh, like I said, uh, certainly as a practical matter, I think it's hard to put the genie back in the bottle.